Alright guys, I'm trying to give this vinyl tutorial a second chance. I filmed a much better one earlier today, but unfortunately the SD card was corrupt, so I lost the whole thing. And I don't feel like redoing the pieces I've used on that. So I'll do a quick demonstration on how awesome this is by uh, using a domed Christmas ornament I bought at Michael's. I uh, was using these as the gems on the boosted gear. I had a leftover one. And I just want to show how well this heat form vinyl uh, goes on over domed surfaces. And since I already did this once, um, as you can see, I don't have the footage, so I'll take it off and do it again. That's another cool thing about this vinyl is that it's repositionable. So if you mess up, you can peel it off start again without damaging your piece. So I'll start fresh. There's some hot glue spots on it from where I tacked it down on the boosted gear. Just get the placement of everything. But I'm going to leave that on to show you how the you know, vinyl picks up the texture. So I went ahead and pre-cut a square a little bit bigger than the uh, Whole shape. And what you're going to want to do is tack this on, heat up, pull, stretch it in place, press it down, heat it up, pull, stretch it in place. Um, it's a little tedious. It takes some work to get it going pretty well on domes, but it's still really cool. Again, if you don't get it right, just peel it off and try again. It's pretty good. But pretend this isn't the heat. Alright, pretend this isn't the heat stretch vinyl. So normally when you push it down, if you couldn't stretch it, you just get all of those ugly wrinkles in it. It's this kind, you won't have to worry about that. And when you see me heat it up, you'll see it, see it um, get soft and kind of flow over the piece. And that's what you want. So when I heated it, I'm going to pull and stretch it in place while kind of squeegeeing the uh, air bubbles out. You'll naturally get some wrinkles around the edge. That's just how this material works. This vinyl can get really soft it's heated and you don't want to overheat it too much or else it will burn it and it will start shriveling up. You just still have to pull it out. trouble in this one spot. And because there's the top of the ornament here, we we'll really have to heat it up and press it around. And there is a limit 
on a, how far this vinyl can stretch. It's kind of just hit or miss on where you do it, especially on these parts that bend inward. Um, it creates a lot of tension and the vinyl wants to pull up. But if you're doing this on a non-porous surface, it won't pop up as much. It happens a lot on the foam because this doesn't really like to adhere to the foam as well, which is why I had to use contact cement to tack it down in spots. But you saw how tough it was for me to peel this off earlier on a plastic. So this will probably work a lot better on styrene or Sintra. Now I'm just trying to get as many of these side wrinkles out as possible. Um, there's some little spots, like there's an air bubble right there, which that's an easy way to get out. You just have to poke a little hole in it and then squeegee it out. Sometimes you have to heat it up a little bit. And even just heating it will get the air out of that. halfway around the uh, edge of the ornament and I'm just going to stop there because I'm getting too many wrinkles. You could dart it like this to uh, get some of those wrinkles out uh, but you really have to know how wide to cut that or else you're going to get um, exposed foam or plastic underneath so I try to avoid darning it as much as possible. I'm going to heat form it up around the top a little bit more. That's pretty good, so I'm going to start trimming it up. I'm going to heat form it again and try to get some of these wrinkles out. You can usually get them out if you are heat it and then squeegee them away. Some of them are a lot more stubborn. You also don't want to heat up the edges too much or else it will start peeling away. can get over some pretty complex shapes a lot. Pretty easy. Just kind of have to know how it works and get used to it. We got another air bubble there. Gonna get that out of there. I'm 
And you can see how it's really picking up that glue texture. Just have to heat it up and push it in. Pretty good. You really have to keep going it back in and heating it and squeegeeing it away. Above the wrinkles. But the thinner the vinyl, the better it is, I've noticed. Let's see. I think that's as good as it's going to get. As you can see, it really went around the top of the ornament pretty nice. Um, I'm worried it might start peeling up more in the uh, corners here. And sometimes that'll happen over longer periods of time, especially on the foam. But this one I feel like is down pretty well. Um, Got like the lip at the top and everything. I was able to get out most of the wrinkles around the edge. Let's see if you can focus on that. But, um, yeah, this is a great alternative to paint, like I said. Uh, you can get it in pretty much any color finish. These are some samples I got for the boosted gear. Most of them are bad. But, um, I don't know how well these will show up, but there's a mirrored chrome, which this is really what I like to use this technique on because sometimes the rattle cans aren't exactly mirrored chrome and sending a piece off to get properly chromed is going to be hundreds of dollars. So this is relatively inexpensive depending on where you get it. Um, this vinyl is usually sold by the foot. Uh, the uh, silver and gold I got from um, Top Vinyl Films. I think these were about $20 a foot. They come in 60 inch lengths. These are from a different site, um, Metro Restyling. It's a little more expensive depending on what brand you get. Because they had not only the mirrored chrome, but um, a matte chrome, which isn't reading well, but it looks a lot nicer in person than the satin chrome, which is what I went with. Um, it's kind of just a frosted chrome. It was actually $55 a foot on that site, and I was not about to pay that, so I went on Easy Auto Wrap on eBay and found the same stuff at about $10 a foot. So instead of spending $100 on two feet of vinyl, I spent like $25 after shipping. But you, when you're all done, you can wrap a full armor pieces. So I don't think I can fit this on the camera. So uh, you can get really nice finishes, especially if you uh, use different sheens, like the mirrored chrome with the satin chrome. It's a nice contrast. This is the ornament. Which I'm going to add lights to and back it a little bit more. But the edges I had to contact cement down so they wouldn't peel up, and I I just want this to last as long as possible. 
So uh, I have a longer video on my Facebook page about how I did these pieces. It's not the best quality because I kind of did it last minute on a whim, but it goes over to process so hopefully you can still get something out of it. And I should be able to get some photos of this tomorrow if the glove came in for it. I'm still wrapping everything. But um, again, this is a great technique if you don't want to use paint or don't like the plasti dip or latex finish on your armor and you want a nice smooth automotive finish. If you want to spend a little extra money, um, heat formable automotive vinyl is definitely the way to go. I'll be using this a lot more in the future, although I'd prefer to experiment on some personal projects before I do it on more commissions. I'll see when that happens. So thanks again for watching. Again, this is heat formable automotive vinyl wrap. And um, I'll be posting more tutorials eventually. Hopefully you guys got something out of this and Thanks for watching.